Hey, Amy, why is Uranus in the back? I don't know. Why? Because <laughs> if it was up front, it would stink. Because of the methane atmosphere? I don't get it. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to D News today. I am Trace and I'm here with Amy as well. In 2005, we had nine planets. Womp womp. And then astronomer Mike Brown discovered a tiny planet orbiting outside of Pluto's crazy pants orbit and dubbed it Eris, kicking off a debate that some believe is unsettled as to what a planet is or is not. We were happy in our ignorance, but come on, there are eight planets, four small rocky planets and four gas giants and five dwarf planets, plus thousands of asteroids, some comets and a bunch of debris flying all around in our solar system. The question is, how did the planets end up in this order with four rocky planets in the front and the giant gassy planets further away? The question about planetary formation remains an ongoing debate because we've never seen a planet form. Our solar system is just one of many possible configurations and formations, but how we got here is pretty cool stuff. Solar systems begin as a collection of gas and dust spinning through space. Eventually, the gas collapses into the center, and as gravity builds, a star, like ours, forms there. Meanwhile, some coalesce into planets, moons, and everything else. But mushing together gas and dust isn't enough to describe this whole crazy process all on its own. A 2015 study in Nature adds tiny pebbles to the spinning mix of gas and dust. Pebble theory says planets form when pebbles zooming around a proto-sun have enough gravity to pull other pebbles, gas and dust into them, making them bigger. Slowly, the bigger pebbles attract the smaller, gaining mass and gravity and forming their own accretion disks of matter. Eventually, they'll become protoplanets, then planetesimals, and if they're lucky, planets of varying sizes. It's all actually pretty chaotic. Planets definitely do not form in a vacuum. Ugh, come on. I mean, they do sort of. No planet is an island, how's that? Better. Because the earliest planets were more massive and had more gravity, they began to grow faster and faster. Over hundreds of millions of years, planets continue to grow, throwing rocks at each other, moving orbits around, and tossing material into interstellar space. In fact, in computer models published last month in the Astrophysical Journal, researchers think Jupiter threw a fifth giant planet right out of our solar system, like an intergalactic bouncer. It's exciting because this model fits with all the orbits and speeds of the moons of Jupiter. It's actually pretty badass. Eventually, all the planets in our system developed rocky cores. Uh, some had more mass than others and more gravity and were able to hold on to their heavy gaseous atmospheres. The tiny rocky bodies of the inner solar system simply aren't massive enough to hold on to such big atmospheres. It's not just about the gravity of each planet's core though. We're also talking about the heat of the whole solar system. Hotter, lighter gases move faster and can thus escape smaller planets more easily than they could from massive gas giants. Astronomers think the inner solar system was maybe 40 times hotter than the outer solar system. So planets like Saturn Saturn and Uranus were cooler and it was easier for them to hold on to their atmospheres, while Mercury and Earth were hotter and had to contend with higher energy gases. Over billions of years, planets in our solar system took shape, jockeyed for position, cleared their orbits, and the system cooled as hot gas spun off. In the end, the planets are in the order they're in because of how the gaseous cloud that was the proto-solar system was spinning and coalescing, and because each planet, like an evolving creature, either absorbed or ejected the stuff in the orbit around the sun. Solar systems don't form planning for success. It just is chaos, and sometimes it works out. Eventually, only eight juggernaut planets remained, each with its own crazy story of impacts and orbits just whipping around the sun. What is your favorite planet? I'm obviously partial to Earth, but I I really like old Uranus, or Uranus actually. It's the butt of so many jokes, but it's on its side. It was knocked over by a massive impact. It's super cool, and it has one little ring. It's like it's hula hooping. Mine's Venus. It rotates backwards, it's incredibly hot, and it's about the same size as the Earth, and it's our neighbor. It's basically like the Earth, but inside out and backwards. But I also have a bit of a thing for Pluto, the little planet that was and now isn't. It actually really helps us understand why the solar system looks like it does. It's something that I dug into on my own channel, Vintage Space. Pluto has very planet-like qualities. It has an atmosphere. That atmosphere has winds. It has been active in its lifetime. And the images from New Horizons are showing mountains on Pluto. Go subscribe to her channel. It's awesome. But enough about us and our favorite planets. What planets do you guys love and why? Let us know in the comments below and keep coming back to Test Tube for more D news every single day of the week. Venus smells like sulfur though. Yeah, but it's still kind of cool. And it's way hot there. Yeah, you die.